Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have the added difficulty where we're now aiming at a target that's below the horizontal axis, a distance of y1 below. The target is still 20 meters away in the horizontal direction, and notice that the angle relative to the horizontal is 20 degrees, so the initial height here can be found by figuring out what y1 is equal to, the distance from the location where the bullet is fired in the horizontal direction, and where the target, where we're aiming at. Of course, we're going to be below that when the bullet finally hits, and that number is 0.1 meter below the center of the target. So first, let's use the tangent, I suppose, to find what y sub 1 is equal to. Notice we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side, which in this case would be y1 over x1, and since we know the angle, we can say that the tangent of 20 degrees equals y1 over x1. And since we know what x1 is equal to, we can say that y1 equals x1 times the tangent of 20 degrees, which is 20 meters times the tangent of 20 degrees. And with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. Tangent times 20 equals, and it looks like 7.279, 7.28, so 7.28 meters, that's y1. Then we realize that y sub naught is simply y1 plus delta y, so therefore y sub naught equals y1 plus delta y, which is equal to 7.28 meters plus 0.1 meter, and y sub naught therefore is 7.38 meters. Okay, now we're ready to solve the problem. Again, the technique is usually the same. We're going to find time in the air using the y component first. So I have y, oh, time in the air, so time in the air. And so we need y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time, that's initial velocity in the y direction times time, and plus one half g t squared, which means we need to find the initial velocity in the y direction, and that can be found by simply saying that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught times the sine of 20 degrees times t minus 4.9 t squared. Plugging in some values here that we know y is the final height, and that would be 0, right? When we get to this point, we're going to call that y equals 0, equals the initial height, y sub naught, which is 7.38, plus, oh, and be careful here, it's a negative direction, so let's make this a negative, because we know that it's in the negative direction. We'll make that a negative, so this becomes minus v sub naught, which we don't know, we're asking for that, v sub naught times the sine of 20 degrees times t minus 4.9 t squared. So now we have an equation for time in the air in the y direction. We'll now do exactly the same for the x direction. Time in the air, and we know that in the x direction we will not have a x sub naught term because we start at x equals zero, and we want to have an acceleration term because there's no forces in the x direction. So we get x equals v sub naught in the x direction times time. In that case, I will be equal to v sub naught times the cosine of 20 degrees times time. Solving this for t, we get t is equal to x divided by v sub naught times the cosine of 20 degrees. And of course, we know what x is in this case. The target is 20 meters away. That's 20 divided by v sub naught times the cosine of 20 degrees. Now what we do is we substitute that into the t in this equation right here to eliminate t, and that will allow us to solve for v sub naught. So let's do that. 0 equals, oh, equals 7.38 minus v sub naught times the sine of 20 degrees. And instead of t, we're going to write this. So that times 20 divided by v sub naught times the cosine of 20 degrees. And then here we get minus 4.9 times 
20 squared divided by V sub naught squared times the cosine squared of 20 degrees. All right, it's not so bad because notice here that the V sub naught cancel in this term and the sine divided by cosine is the tangent. So this becomes 0 equals 7.38 minus 20 times the tangent of 20 degrees. And here we get minus 4.9 times 400 divided by the cosine squared of 20 degrees and times 1 over V sub naught squared. Notice in this equation there's only one term that has a V sub naught squared and so we have to simplify the equation so we can solve for that. I'm running kind of out of board space so let me go over here and try to squeeze that in. We get 0 is equal to 7.38 and let's see here. The tangent of 20 degrees times 20 is minus 7.28. Ah, minus 7.28. And then minus, we get, uh, let's take the 20, take the cosine of that, square that, take the inverse of that, times 4.9 and times 400 equals. Okay, I get 2220 minus 2220 over V sub naught squared. Let me do that again just to make sure I didn't make a mistake there. So we got 400. Yes, 2220. So next, what we're going to do is solve that for V sub naught. So moving this across, we get. 2220 divided by V sub naught squared, moving this to the other side becomes positive, equals 0 0.1, right? 7.38 minus 7.28 is 0 0.10. Finally, good thing I'm almost done because I'm running out of board space. We get V sub naught squared is equal to 2200 divided by 0 0.10. So we take that. We multiply it times 10, take the square root, and we have V sub naught is equal to 149 meters per second. There we go. And that's what we're looking for. So here we're shooting a rifle out at an angle of 20 degrees. Notice we have to get Y sub naught by summing up Y sub 1 plus a delta Y. Notice when we subtracted here, this component minus this component, we end up with the delta y here. So this is going to equal delta y, and that allows us to solve for v sub naught squared. Not to do a check. In other words, what we can do here is now that we know v sub naught in the x direction, we can actually find the time, right? So that will be 20 divided by this times the cosine of 20. So let's use a different color and find the time in this case. So the time is equal to 20 divided by 149 and divided by 20, take the cosine of that, equals, and we get a time of 0 0.1428 seconds. So using that initial velocity, we're able to calculate the time using this equation. Now, plug in that time in our y equation, here we go, our y equation, we should be able to check to see if we get the proper difference in height. So let's do that. We're going to take this time and plug it in here. So we're going to square that times 4.9 and that makes it a negative. That gives us 0 0.1. And then here, so this is interesting, this term here becomes a minus 0 0.1, which accounts for that additional drop of 0 0.1 here caused by the acceleration. And then this term right here should give us the y sub 1. And of course, y sub naught is our initial height. So let's figure out what this is equal to. And again, take the time, 0 0.1428 times the sine of 20, and times initial velocity of 149, and that sure enough gives us a minus 7.28. So notice a minus 7.28 
and the minus 0.1 gives us a minus 7.38, which is the initial height when we started at, and the final height then would be zero. So by doing a quick check using the time, we can see that, yes, we do indeed get the correct components here, and so we're pretty confident that we found the correct answer, and that's how it's done.